Hello, this is Padma from PadmaAli.com. I'm sitting in my back deck and I'm hoping you can you get to see the little hummingbirds coming to the hummingbird feeder in the back there. So I today we're going to talk about different ways, 10 ways to ground yourself energetically. And I'm gonna share with you how to identify when you are ungrounded and what are 10 steps, 10, not, they're not steps, they're 10 different ways to ground yourself energetically and why this is important. This is Padma from PadmaAli.com and make sure to visit my website to get more information about me. I help spiritually evolved leaders to transform their lives so that they can serve at their highest potential. So today we're gonna to be talking about 10 ways to ground yourself energetically and why this is important. So I have my notes here. If you're spiritually attuned and if you are a conscious leader, there are chances that you will, you are affected by energies around you, the planetary energies around you whether you're conscious about it or not. Some people are very aware and tuned in and many aren't, but they are very spiritually evolved. So they feel the energies, just don't know what to do with it. Not only that, what happens is that people get affected anytime. See, this is how the brain works. So when you are triggered by something, right? You may not realize that that has something to do with the planetary movement of energies and the chaotic energy that we are surrounded by right now. But what happens is the brain tries to pin it down to what's happening in your life. What that means is there may be incidents or things happening in your life that is that that you want to pin how you're feeling into. However, it may have nothing to do with that. It may have everything to do with how you're being affected by the energies on the planet. Whether you see this or not, there's a lot of chaos happening around us, not only on the physical plane, but energetically, there's a lot of chaotic energies. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is how to identify when you are experiencing ungroundedness. So it may show up in different ways for different people. And this is where you want to tune into yourself to notice how it shows up for you specifically. Okay, so for me, for instance, it shows up as mind fogginess, or I might start feeling very tired for no reason, even if I've gotten a good night's sleep. Or for some people, it shows up as emotionally erratic, like you're all over the place with your emotions. Your emotions are really in um, chaotic, they, they feel chaotic or they feel erratic. Like you're angry one, to one moment, suddenly some things trigger you or you feel really like down and, and depressed or anxious. It shows up as different energies emotionally. For some other people, it shows up as cloudiness in the mind, like you can't think straight, you can't speak straight. You know, so many birds in the background. I hope you can hear it. It's really soothing. It's so amazing. Like, you know, this is the beauty of spring and summer. We get to experience nature. So some people get unfocused. Some people can't sleep well. Like you just, you're just like, you just, you're not feeling yourself. And in all those times, basically what's happening is you're being affected by the energies and it's showing up in different forms. Some people tend to eat more because they're feeling this ungroundedness and they just want to eat more. So, um, and then you, turn, you tend to turn to sugary items or like things that you feel like is going to boost that energy, but in fact, it actually brings you down further. So the first step for you is to look at how am I being impacted by the energies of the planet? 
how does it show up for me specifically so spend some time on that it is really really important that you do that because that is going to give you a better sense of knowing yourself the more you know and understand you the more you know how this is impacting you the more you're going to be able to use that information so all right so now let's talk about ways to ground yourself i have 10 different ways to ground yourself so they're not in any one particular order what i'm going to invite you to do is look at different things that i'm suggesting and see which one resonates for you because again some things might resonate for you and some things might not you might try and do a few things and then you may be like this doesn't work for me this works for me so you have to find ways that is best for you. This is what I tell my clients all the time, that we are all unique beings, right? We are, each one of us is unique. And you get to decide, you get to tune into your intuition to see what works best for you. All right, so I'm just going to present you like a platter of information and you get to pick this one resonates for me, this one doesn't, and tune into your own intuition about it. Okay, so now that you've identified how you're being affected by the energies of the planet, how it shows you, how it shows up for you, do you, do you know the reason I'm asking you to do that? Because when you know, like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I can't think straight, then you're like, oh, okay, it's probably that I need more grounding, right? Then you can connect the two and you can do something about it. The, 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 the time, I can't speak. The times where we have a harder time is, be, is when you, you, things are happening and you don't know, you, you don't have conscious comprehension of what's going on and then you are being reactive in your life. That is when there's a problem. Okay, so it's important to identify like, oh, this is probably me feeling ungrounded. So now I can apply these 10, one of these 10 things to make me feel more grounded. So the first one I often recommend is walking barefoot. Connect with Pachamama, Mother Earth, Gaia, like different names for Mother Earth. Pachamama is the name I resonate with the most. So she's our mother. We have earth in us we come from the earth we go back into the earth so we have earth in us so when you walk barefoot then you get to experience the grounding power of pachamama you know i grew up in the indian culture where we, everything we read you know like when i was growing up we would often turn to home remedies for, you know, common ailments like cold and, you know, cough and like headaches and like things like that. There was always this, this, you know, we would connect back with the elements to help heal the body. The uh, earth, you know, you the, we have access to everything that we need to heal, whether it's mentally or spiritually or physically, we have access to all of that. And, we the, the problem is most people are so disconnected from all of this that they haven't started they they they're not conscious of how aware is the word they're not aware of how they can utilize the power of the elements to heal okay so walking barefoot is really important it really helps and the reason i went back to my roots of where i grew up in the indian culture is because when i was growing up there were a lot of people who would just walk barefoot there's there used to be a, a gentleman who used to work for our family he'd worked for our family for decades he used to take care of my mom when she was a baby and then like you know then he was it was part of our family literally part of our family but he used to he was more like a family member than a worker and i used to watch him he would always walk barefoot and um he was always so healthy too i mean he came from a very meager background and we helped him a lot we helped his family a lot but he would just look so healthy and vibrant and he lived for a long time and he would only walk barefoot that's it always 
And I was, I always struck me. And then when I learned about grounding and using walking barefoot as a way to ground, well, I was like, wow, that makes so much sense. So walking barefoot is really, is one of the ways that you can ground yourself. Okay, number two, moving your body. There are two aspects of move, of body, taking care of your body. So, you know, like energy is trapped. That is what happens when you feel stagnant with your energy, right? So when you move your body, whether it's going for a walk or doing exercise or doing yoga or things that can and, and allow your energy to move, it is going to help you clear the energy. Now, there are two, another aspect of this, which is the foods that you eat. The food that you eat has a direct impact on how grounded or ungrounded you feel. You see, I grew up vegetarian, but my body does not do well with a vegetarian diet. I did not know that, right? Because my, my family is vegan, my, my parents and my sister and like everybody is this vegan, is vegan and that's how I grew up. But if you have followed me for any length of time, you know that I was very sick for a long time. And in that time period, the only food that my body would digest was um, meat which was so hard for me because, you know, I love animals. I'm still a big, huge animal lover. And it was a huge mental shift in letting go of identity to, to, um, to allow myself to even ingest meat. However, it is exactly what my body needed. And that is exactly what grounds me. Now, meat may not be what grounds you, but what I'm inviting you to look at is your diet and notice what helps your body? What helps your body? When do you feel more energized? When do you feel not so energized? What kind of food allows your body to feel uplifted? What kind of food makes you sluggish and not so good about feeling good about yourself? So for me, like grains don't agree well with my body and I don't do well with sugar and um, processed sugar. I don't do well with processed food, but this is something I've just Discovered over a period of time. So I am going to invite you to spend some time looking at, are you moving your body? What kind of foods impact your body? What kind of foods will support your body? So spend some time with that. So the second one is body, movement and foods that you ingest. Okay, so the third one is crystals. <laughs> There's a reason I have crystals all around me. They are grounding because what are crystals? They're just stones. Where do stones come from? Earth. Earth is grounding. That's why I wear so many crystals. I'm not saying you need to be crystal. My, my family makes fun of me. I'm like, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't care. This is what works for me. I want you to start finding things that ground you. This may or may not ground you. I have crystals everywhere. I'm wearing them. Like I'm, I have them in my hand. I have them around my house. Like it's just something that works well for me. So you have to find ways that support you. Okay. All right. So the, the, I don't even know which number that was barefoot, moving your body, crystals, third, okay. Fourth. Okay. This is really an interesting thing. The magnetic, magnetic, um, the Earth's magnetic poles are shifting. Now, you can do your own research on that. What this means is that, see, the, um, the Earth's magnetic, we all have metals in us. This is just part of like our makeup, right? So the reason I'm bringing this up is when you sleep, this is about sleeping. So when you sleep with your head to the north, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, then the, the magnetic force of the earth is going to pull the metals into your, into your head. It's just what happens. Now, this may sound little woo to you. This is why I'm saying go do your own research and see what works for you. But when you sleep with your head to the north, it pulls the metals into your head, thereby creating more fogginess in your head. So if you're sleeping with your head to the north, move it in the northern hemisphere and you move it and you sleep anywhere else without your head to the north. 
If you're in the southern hemisphere, you don't want to be sleeping with your head to the south. Now, again, do your research, see what works for you. But if you are sleeping with your head to the north in the northern hemisphere or in the south, southern hemisphere, then please shift it and notice the difference for yourself. Don't take my word for it. This is something, again, it was it's really going to be very, I'll give you an, I'll give you my personal example. So when we moved to this, this house here, um, my bedroom is fine. Like the, my, my bed does not face the north. Whereas my kid's bedroom, the, the beds, they're not in t exactly north, but they're just like 10 degrees off of north. So I thought, you know what? It's okay. This is fine. Like it's just 10 degrees, but it wasn't okay for my kids because they wouldn't sleep well. So then I just <laughs> flipped there, but there's no way to move the bed because that's how their rooms are structured. I just flipped the, the, the pillows to the other side. They slept, started sleeping really well. Their sleep was not disturbed anymore. So you want to be sleeping at least 15 to preferably 45 degrees away from north if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Again, do your own research, see what works for you, but this is something I know will help you feel more grounded. Okay, the fifth one is the infrared sauna. If you have access, if you have the ability to buy one, get one in your home, but if you don't, there are lots of um, spas and salons that have infrared sauna that you can use, even gyms have it. Before we moved here, I used to go to a gym and they had the infrared sauna in their gym, in the, in the locker room. And so I would just use that. But infrared sauna is amazing for detoxing your body and it will help you feel more grounded. So anytime I start feeling ungrounded, I start doing a lot of these things. I walk barefoot, I go sit in the sauna, I make sure that my food is intake is like, is more grounding. I do all of these things so that I can get back on track. Okay. Okay, the sixth one is soaking yourself in a tub with Epsom salt or any kind of sea salt. Now, why is that helpful for grounding? Salt has the ability to remove energies or shift energies. And so if you're feeling ungrounded, chances are there's trapped energy and this is going to help you feel more grounded. So soak yourself in an infrared, so in, I mean, soak yourself in a tub with salt, okay? Number seven, meditation. Meditation is incredibly grounding because it slows down the brain waves. It brings you to a level of peace. Along with meditation, you can also add some breath work that is also very grounding. You can do different types of breath work like this pranayama, which is basically prana is life force. Breath work creates life force. So you can do the alternate nostril breathing, which is called Nadi Shodhana. You, there's so many different types of breathing techniques that you can utilize to bring yourself back into center. So meditation, breath work, very, very useful. Music. That is number eight, music. Music has the ability to shift energy. Try it next time. Anytime you're feeling kind of low or kind of not yourself, just put on some nice music and see what happens. Discover that for your own self. And in a variation of music that is going to help you feel more grounded, there's the 528 Hertz music, which is also called the solfagio music. Well, I don't know if it's actually called solfagio or not, but there, there may be two different things. I can't remember on the top of my head, but solfagio music, it's S-O-L-F-E-G-G-I-O, -G -G -I solfagio music or 528 hertz either of those two are very grounding so put that on and lie down flat and see yourself getting more and more grounded okay number nine it's journaling and gratitude journaling is so powerful because when you start journaling allowing yourself to express whatever is going on it's going to bring you to a place of center and that will bring you more feel more grounded so journaling and in journaling i often recommend gratitude journaling because when you are in gratitude again remember what when you're not un, when you're ungrounded basically what's happening is your energetic frequencies are not matching that of feeling more grounded so when you do that then when you when you when you're in gratitude your energetic frequencies shift 
and then it makes you more in connection with earth and with in connection with with all of with nature around you that's another way to ground being in nature go for walks hikes all of those things will be helpful so journaling being in gratitude is going to be so helpful for you number 10 last but not least anyone want to take a guess dancing dancing why dancing next time you don't feel good put on music and start dancing and notice the shift within you in seconds it literally shifts because music your brain is not over going thinking about whatever is happening you're in your body you're in the present moment it's very very grounding so bring yourself back to present moment by dancing all right so these are the different ways to ground yourself energetically um, again starting with notice how it shows up for you and apply one of these things and see the results for yourself share this with your friends and family because everybody needs this at this time on this planetary journey that we're all on oh my god we we really 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 need to feel more connected with mother earth and with ourselves more than anything else so I know this video is super helpful for many of you. Please subscribe to the channel and also share this with more people because the more people who can practice this, we are uplifting the vibration of the planet. So thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Padma from PadmaAli.com. I'm very excited that you are here watching this and um, I'm sending you so much love. Bye.